doing life right now. Okay. And how do I Our share life. on Facebook? Do I go to your page? Yeah, Tribune events, and you can share from there. Okay. Perfect, just share it on Facebook. And let me do it on Bright Candy as well. Okay. Where is... Okay, awesome. Done? Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on, I shared it on my personal, so let me put it on the professional one as well, the Bright Candy Facebook. Um, for some reason it wasn't letting me, so let me just do it from my phone, which is a lot faster anyways. Awesome. Okay, so we're set to go. We have just a minute left. Awesome. Let me just put up the video. And yes. Okay. Okay, it's three o'clock. We good to go? Yes. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Isabel Spiff. Welcome to the Octopus series. I know it's not normally on a Thursday, but uh, we had a special guest on and this was the only time we could get him. So uh, we're bringing to you today, joining us today on the Octopus series to discuss, um, to discuss the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the globe is Christopher Plaza from Florida. Hi, Chris. Hi. So I'll tell you briefly about, about Chris. I'm good. I'll tell you briefly about Chris and he'll fill us in on the rest. Okay. So, <laughs> so Christopher Plaza learned to love flowers as a child in his father's garden. So to him, they've always been a symbol of love. He was born and raised in Connect Connecticut. A few years ago, he packed up his business and his entire life and moved to Miami, Florida in search of love and happiness. He found what he was looking for and have, has been so fortunate to have worked many beautiful weddings and events in South Florida. He believes that he was brought into the world to help celebrate love. He has been in the industry for over 10 years and has worked with some of the top event planners, venues and vendors in Miami. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, thank you. All right. So, Chris, tell us a little bit about your journey as um, an event professional, particularly a florist. Tell us what it is that brings um, that that brought you into this line of business. Yes, we know that you have a, a love for, for flowers from your childhood, but what what made you turn it into a business? So, um, ever since I was really young. I um, was big on love and I was very fairy tale oriented and always wanted to just, uh, was always, always loved weddings, always loved events. Um, so it was natural to me to want to decorate. I'm always very creative as well. 
Um, so I knew I wanted to be in the wedding industry. I started as a coordinator and also designer. Um, okay. When I moved to Miami, which was four years ago, I transitioned into just flowers because flowers is my passion. Um, but what makes me a little bit different from other designers is that um, since I started off as a planner, I still have that rapport relationship with my clients and I try to give them the best customer service. I think about things a little bit differently. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love what I do. It's definitely been my dream for a very long time. So, um, and I've been doing this for a very long time. So I'm very blessed and love it. Can I please? Hi, Chris. Hi, can you see me? Okay. Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, same. <laughs> it got a little quiet. Yeah, I think it was it was a network. Okay. Are, are we good now? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Did you did you guys hear everything that I said or do I have to repeat anything or I I think you can just backtrack a bit. Okay. Um so when I um I started off as a coordinator and designer. And so when I moved to Miami, I transitioned it's just flowers because yeah. that's my real passion. Um, and yeah, that's what kind of makes me a little bit different from other designers is that I still have, since I started off as a coordinator, I still have the rapport relationship with my clients and I try to give them the best customer service. And I just think about things a little bit differently. Um, so, and this is definitely something I've wanted to do since I was very, very young. So I'm very um, grateful. Okay, so you just uh, basically followed your passion. I yeah? followed my passion, and yeah. It, and, yeah. It, and it pays the bills, yeah? <laughs> that was the best part. I mean, I, I think I've been doing it for a very long time, but in the beginning, you know, I would work, you know, two jobs and then my third job would be my business, you know? And so now it's okay. amazing to be in this place where um, this is my only source of income since when I moved to Miami, it really did, um, you know, I had left everything that I knew. I had to restart my business. And there was a lot of, um, you know, learning coming from that. And there's a lot of growth coming from that, you know, restarting and, and just kind of learning from the mistakes that I had made and everything else. And also realizing okay. that was my passion. Um, so it is my only source of income. And I'm very blessed because I love being my own boss. Um, and okay. I love doing what I love, so. Okay, so with the onslaught of the uh, global pandemic, the events in industry the world over was, was greatly impacted. So how did you, how, how did that impact your business first of all, and how did you work your way around it or through it? So, um, well, I guess like this situation happened in segments. I think that's kind of like what all of us in the industry went through because in the beginning, a lot of us thought yeah. it was going to be like two, two months, three months, you know, and now we're like six, seven months in. Um, so yeah. in the beginning, I really took advantage of the time. So there was, a, you know, well, first let me backtrack. All my events were, a lot of my events were pushed back. And at first it was the very immediate ones and that impacted me, of course. But, you know, it was as simple as that, you know, they were just pushed back. So, you know, yeah. and at that point, you know, we were just taking advantage of the time, uh, which I encourage everyone to do where I were doing things that um, I said I was going to do, but I never had time to do, you know, uh, worked on my website, okay. you know, got those, um, those ratings from all my clients and really just did, you know, redid my workshop and did all that stuff. Um, later on is when it started becoming a little bit more real. And we all, all of us started to realize how serious, um, you know, 
this the situation was and that it wasn't just going to be like a month or two thing and we're going to just wear a mask and that's it. And, you know, it was very apparent that it was going to be for the long run. So the first thing that we did was exactly. We, yeah, we reached out to our clients and we're like, hey, how are you? We're very honest because none of us really knew, you know, that how, you know, and we still don't really know how long things are gonna last or what, what's gonna happen in the future. Um, but what we did was we pivoted. And I think that as a business, um, it's very important to be able to do that in these times. Okay. So what we started doing was a subscription service for flowers, which is something that I had always wanted to do um, and just never had the time, we never really did it. And so we did it um, and then we started doing bouquets. So instead of just doing events, I started doing um floristry like you know almost like a floor shop but no one can leave their house so people were looking for ways to tell their mother I love you to say happy birthday a lot of um sympathy bouquets that we had to make and the amazing thing oh, about wow, it yeah. was the feedback that we got like I can't tell you how many people like cried you know or or just people that lost someone that wrote me and were saying that you know, you made, you made my life just a little bit happier. So now, even though we're still doing events, we're still booking for next year, things kind of have been looking up on this end, um, but we still exactly. are these bouquets and everything else, because if it does happen again, if there's another wave, then we put the energy back into the subscriptions and we push that even more and there's another source of income. I think that's very important. Um, okay. I got very complacent. So you guys, you, you put on your, your thinking cap and you got to work, yeah? Yes, I did. I mean, I think all of us as business owners, is we, we have no choice. This is how we make our money. And we can't just wait around until things get better. You know, I think some people just kind of like put their hat away and we're like, you know what, it's, I'm just going to write it out. But the truth is, is that if you just write it out, if you don't, you know, try to find another source of income or really reinvent yourself or just do maybe some events that are a little bit smaller in the meantime, then really you're just waiting for something that you don't know when is going to come. And of course we need the income, you know, this is how we make our bread and butter. And yeah. it's, um, even though it's been a very stressful and also sad point, I'm really in a way glad that it happened in the sense of that I learned that as a business owner, we have to pivot and that there's no stopping, you know, I think that's very important. Yeah, I guess it opened up opportunities for some from for some people who took advantage of it. And for some, they just they're just waiting for okay, when this is all over, then we can go back into business. But I think um innovation is the way to go. So with clients that had to cancel or had to like weddings that were cancelled or postponed, how did you handle them? You know, some clients are easier to handle than others. So it's, I mean, yes, that is very true. And I'll be lying if I said that I meet every, I mean, there's only one, thank God. But, you know, I really, we really try to give our clients the best and be there for them. I really do do this because this is my passion. And I really went at this heart first. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, we also have to think about what's good for our businesses, what's, you know, what's good for us and everything else. And so we really were just there for our clients. Um, we really tried to just be honest with them and, and, and just, uh, you know, we postponed, we did, you know, maybe little extra things here and there. Um, but the truth is, is that in these circumstances, like none of us are really in a, at our best. You know, I think that everyone's very like with, with the mass and the situation that we are. So imagine being getting married and having to be affected that way. I'm actually getting married in May of next year. And so I kind of have a different perspective because planning my wedding during COVID kind of gives me that, like puts me, me in the client's shoes. So I try to use that, of course, but really we just try to be there for our clients. There's yeah. only so much that we can do. We can't stop COVID. You know, we can just give them the options and really just, just be there for them as much as we can. And I think that that's what's going to make people very different. And also like make clients different. You know, if let's say you have a, a, a a reta your retainer is non-refundable if you are there if you come out and you're really there for these clients and yeah. you explain to them hey listen this is why this is why but 
I'll do this for you. You know, let's, if, if you, you know, postpone, I'll, I, you know, I will charge you for that or whatever it is that, whatever it is that works for you because all businesses are different. Uh, but that's, I think yeah, it's, exactly. it's customer service for sure, no matter what. Uh, it, and that's okay. what it's going yeah, I agree with you. I think at least you have to make sure your clients are comfortable in this situation, even though it's novel to everyone. But I, I guess um, the client's needs have to come first. Mm -hmm. So did you did you have to deal with difficult clients who are like, oh, well, there's a pandemic. I need a full refund of all that um, you were so, all that I've already paid in. Uh, did you have to deal with those uh, kind of clients? I did. So there was two to be honest with you. Um, one of them, you know, I was very upfront with her, but I, I had, I know my clients. So I know she was going to get married. And I, I was like, listen, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Like if you change your mind, the retainer is there. Okay. And so with her, she actually just, she's, she just called me like last week and she did um, you know, she is getting married. It is going to be smaller. And so we're going to give her this beautiful dream wedding. Cause of course now her wedding is a lot smaller. Yeah. So it's going to be like this, you know, this wedding that looks like it's 10 grand, but it's not because it's just small and it's more intimate. Um, more and intimate wasn't so yeah. yeah. And there was another circumstance where we couldn't make them happy at all. You know, it was very unfortunate. Um, this person, they postponed a few times and, um, you know, we did it free of charge, which was, you know, some people do charge for that. I, I did not. Um, but it became where I just couldn't make them happy. And they just didn't really see the work that I did. And I, at, at some point, you know, I think in these circumstances as well, what I learned in this situation for sure is that they, this person tried to, first, I have a contract in place that protects me. That's number one. And so that's something that um, going through all of this, I realized, wow, great. Okay, I'm so glad I had a lawyer look at this. I'm so glad that I have all my P's and Q's and everything, you know, set. I'm so glad that I had him re-sign for the dates okay. that he put home. So I have proof, a paper trail, you know, things that we should be doing on a normal. We don't think these things are going to happen, but they, you know, it's very possible. So this, this person, you know, exactly, I yeah, I couldn't make this person happy. You know, they lied and said that, all the client, all the other vendors gave back their retainer and everything else. So what I did was I reached out to the vendors. I knew the vendors. I reached out. I, you know, really thought about, you know, is it fair to me that I'm, I housed a bunch of their stuff. I had given so much of my energy for them. They were a little bit more of a difficult client even before the pandemic. And I really had to realize, you know, is this something that you know, do I give back the deposit and just say here, just stop, or do I keep it or do, you know, or really fight for what I, what I do. And so yeah. what I decided to do was that I gave him the option. Listen, you know, you, you knew all three times that the deposit was non-refundable and yeah. the truth was that they could have gotten married, but it just wasn't the wedding that they wanted. Right. And so I told them, I said, listen, if, if you're going to cancel your wedding, you, if you elope, I'll give you the most beautiful elopement ever and if in, in a bouquet. And if not, you can, you know, have that retainer on hold. And if you book for another year, then I'll honor that retainer. But I'm not getting your yeah. deposit back. It's also not fair to other clients as well, right? Like you can't just pick and choose who, what client you're going to give money back, what client you're not going to give money back. And then it's also not fair for other exactly. vendors. Exactly. So you'll stick with what your contract says. Exactly. And it's also for other vendors because well, let's say, for example, I give, I give them their money back and then you, you, you have to as well, because I do, it just doesn't send a good message. Um, so I really stuck to my guns and unfortunately, you know, I couldn't make this person happy. I get but that. All, all, this is what a uh, reputation perceives you, you know, like I know that my clients love me. And if you look at my reviews, like all I have is like just all these amazing clients that just say amazing things about me. And then I have, you know, my planners, my venues, all these people that I work with that, you know, yeah, I was, I scared about that review. Was I scared that they were going to, you know, do a, a, make a big fuss or try to threaten to sue or all that. Of course. But as business owners, we have to protect our castles and, and we have to protect that ourselves and, um, also the people around us. So I really felt like it was important for me to stick my guns. 
Okay, okay, yeah. I, I guess you win some and you lose some. Not every client is uh, that easy to deal with. So I guess people management should be a skill for all event professionals. In fact, all business owners, really. <laughs> all business owners. So what, were, um, what was the major challenge that you had during this period? Yes, you told us that you, um, you did some innovation and you started doing bouquets and doing stuff that you could send off to people. But in all of that, what was the major challenge, apart from being um, hit by the COVID-19, doing this new innovation, what were the challenges you found? So to be very authentic and honest, <laughs> the biggest challenge was that at heart and hearts, I'm an artist. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you how much I've cried. First of all, like, I, it broke my heart every time someone did have to postpone. And I'm very empathic in that sense. So I would literally take it serious, like personal. Like I felt so bad, you know, and just really tried to be there for my clients and it broke my heart. And then all these events, all these beautiful events that I was supposed to do were not happening. And so I kind of was going through this, I want to say like depression where I'm like in bed or anything like that, but it, I was unhappy. Um, so that was like my big takeaway. I think that like, you know, even business aside, we're human and we're all going through this. A lot of us are not seeing our families. I didn't see my family for a very long time. Um, I was nervous about, you know, are my bills going to get paid? How, you know, my business was growing rapidly and I felt like things kind of slowed down. Um, so it was just a lot. And I think that like, it was, that was my biggest challenge was seeing past myself was fighting through the sadness and the stress and really still pushing my business no matter what, no matter how hard things are gonna get, I have to one, make sure I'm okay. And two, keep going. So that was the biggest one because I was okay. like, oh God, if I don't do a wedding, I'm gonna go crazy. But the truth is I have been wedding and pivoting helped me with that. You know, that even through a pandemic, the whole reason why I'm doing this, celebrating with, um, you know, celebrating love with flowers, I was still able to do it. Just not, maybe not those big, beautiful events that I love doing. Yeah, not on a large scale. In other ways. So that was my biggest one, was, was me. And I think that a lot of us as business owners, we think, you know, it's this, it's that. It's, I'm scared that, you know, um, this is going to continue and I can't take any more postponements. And, but the truth of it is, is yeah. it's true. It's how you feel in here. So that was my biggest. Sure. Yeah. 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 I guess everybody had to had that struggle, the mental struggle with um, everything just so depressing and all of that. It was easy for one to just, you know, sink into depression. But I guess positivity is the route to go in, in order to reposition your business and just generally stay relevant. So what would be, as, as a florist, um, most times you work with planners. Do you do venue styling as well? Event, um, styling, you said venue styling? Yes, venue styling. Yes, I do. Um, I, those are my favorite, to be honest. Uh, but to each their own, I mean, I've had, um, you know, if a bride reaches out to me or a bride or groom or whoever, they reach out to me first then a lot of times, you know, I offer that as well. And then sometimes it depends on, you know, the container okay. as well. Oh, that's good. So you, you already have multiple streams of income from the events industry. <laughs> yes, I mean, every so often I do do day of coronation. It's not something that I really promote, um, but every there okay. is like one venue that I work at that, you know, I did it once and then, they're like, oh my God, you know, this person, they do flowers and, you know, day of coronation. Um, but it's not really my, my thing. I'm more about the decor. So I stick to, to okay. that. No, that's cool. That's cool. But with, um, with this, with this pandemic, you, you, you may want to also keep that door open because where, where one isn't really, um, um, uh, really being patronized, you can, you can have the other one flourishing as well. I think that's something too, with, with being an entrepreneur, with being a business per, uh, owner, a lot of us, um, you know, it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? 
this is my company. If I don't, you know, but we have to also think that we can make as much money as we want, or we can pivot, or we can change. Versus, there's other people who maybe lost their job, or who, yeah. and it's like, what am I gonna do? I let's say just for let's say they're a baker, and all the bakers close bakeries close. You know what? What do they have to do? You know, they 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 have to find somebody else to work for. Versus yeah. us, we just can pivot. If you're a planner, you can do smaller events. You can do like you know, event yeah. box, you know, with me, I did the bouquets, you just have to really get creative on how, um, you know, m- to make money and then also market yourself, pushing your marketing a little bit more so that when this does end, then you do get those clients yeah. and, and really focusing on like your website and everything else. So I think for sure, that's a, a blessing for sure. Okay. Okay. So we should see the silver lining in all of this. I think it, it, it's actually helped a lot of us really do our, really restructure our businesses and put our structures in place. Like I know a lot of people who didn't have contracts um, protecting them, they now have. So I guess that's one, one of the um, advantages that came out of all of this. So to your fellow florists, what will you say? Well, what advice will you give them? Because there, there are some people who are still in a rut. They are still not able to get themselves together to reposition their businesses. Like those who feel that their businesses have died, they are not able to revive it. They are not able to reposition themselves for success. What would you say to them, event professionals in general? Remember your why you know, your why is always going to be the thing that pushes you um, in your darkest of times in your business. Um, Remember your why. And then also remember that you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, you can make it happen. If you, if, if you have a business right now, first of all, starting a business is brave on its own. You know, like now a lot of people do not go on and make their own business. So you have to give yourself credit for that. Um, but I would say just keep going. You know, the weddings in our industry, weddings will always happen. They may change. The size may change. The styles may change. That will always happen eventually. Every yeah. step, every uh, few years, things are going to change. You know, in the very beginning, it was, it was weddings were just a few people and that's it. Um, but for sure, just don't give up. Pivot as much as you can. Um, you know, don't get yourself so much in a rut like for fellow florists I've seen a lot of them that haven't been marketing and haven't been doing anything they're just like I mean what else am I going to do you have to stay fresh in people's minds you have to keep going you have to okay. um, stop because we don't know what else there's so many other things that could happen as well in the future whether it's a pandemic whether you know if you have right. a little shop and it burns down what do you do you, you're not just going to sit there and have it fix itself you have to pick up the pieces keep going no matter what so remember your why, why you're doing this. Remember that you started this business from nothing, that you've created this. And if you, yeah. you know, start, create this business from nothing, then you can take it to the next level or pivot it to something else where you can still, you know, be living your dream and still have your, um, your business and everything else. And, and yeah, it just takes time and work and you just have to like keep going. So that would be my advice. Just to keep going. Okay. So for us here, for us event professionals in Nigeria, when this happened, we got a lot of people pivoting into catering. So they had a lot of home deliveries, party in a box, all of that, trays and all that. So we had a lot of um, surprise birthdays or surprise calls. You have a tray of food delivered to you. So it was easier for some people to do that. For um, a florist, what would you say is the easiest um, area to pivot into in the event so, industry? Yeah, so event florals. Um, so there was a few things that we did. So we did the subscription, which it was, you know, either a weekly or um, bi-weekly floral subscription that, each, you know, you would get this beautiful bouquet wrapped in gorgeous paper. Um, and so then people would either get that as gifts or for themselves because they're home. Yeah. You know, now things are a little bit, you know, a little, a little bit more normal, I guess, with masks. But um, yeah. at the time when we started, we're still normal. 
uh, the new normal, yeah. So in the time when we started, we were all stuck at home. So people were like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna buy flowers yeah. every week, you know? Um, and then also like for us, we're used to doing, you know, a hundred people events. Like the smallest event was like 75. We started doing smaller events, um, teaming up with other planners. Um, I think when it comes to, for us florists, planners um, and having just a group of people that you work really well with, not just a planner, but come up as a group of something, you know, like I, and let's say, okay. let's start many events. Like um, the one popular thing that we have now is the car, the parades, you know, there's planners that do beautiful backdrops with flowers and cakes and, and then people just drive by in, in their car and they beep and everything else. People actually, there were some people that really paying, paid a lot of money for that. And that's something that's still kind of popular now. Okay. Hours that, you know, so there's a lot of different things. Um, also think about things that you've always wanted to do, but never, you know, never did before. I, I had a lot around to do it. Yeah, I had a friend who um, her husband loves mix, mixing drinks. So he started this um, like a kit where it goes to your house and you, I actually get it all the time. And it has like the syrup and it has these ingredients. All you have to do is get the actual alcohol. And it actually did really, really well because everyone was trying to, um, first of all, everyone thought it was fun and was, like, was looking for something to do at home. And then exactly. also support a small business a lot. I feel like COVID has opened up a lot of people's eyes. And, and you know, even me, I've, I've been ordering a lot of things from like small businesses and and really trying to push. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I haven't even thought of myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, over the, did you guys have any, did you have any interface with the government to talk about um, ways or protocols should, that should be put in place so that the events industry can fully open? Did you guys have that chat with them? Do we have that? I'm sorry, the last thing you said. Did you guys did you guys have that chat with the government concerning how event the events industry can reopen, given all the safety protocols put in place? Well, I did not. And I would lie, I would be lying if I said that I was not going to, because I was. And what ended up happening was that we hope we did open at half capacity, but at some point. You know, I told my, my partner, that's also my business partner, I'm like, I can't anymore. And I was going to plan on speaking up. It's really hard in these circumstances because, you know, there's so much critique in so many different ways. So I was hesitant in the beginning because I felt like if I spoke out, that people were going to assume that I wasn't for being safe. And that's not the truth. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm quite the contrary like you know again I'm also getting married so I try to think of it if I was to, if if May 13th happened right and let's say things were not normal would I still go through with my wedding yes will I want it to be safe yes will I you know yeah. do all these guidelines but it's not it wasn't really fair at some point where you know there was restaurants open here in Miami but you couldn't have a wedding you know, and then it's, it's in one restaurant, these, all these people that don't know each other, when in a wedding, you know, there is family members. If you, if somebody did have COVID, you can, yeah. everybody that was there, it's very easy to do it. So no, we didn't have that conversation. Is it something that if things go back to the way they were, or I feel like it's unfair that I will have, then yes, of course I will. But just at the time that I was, because, I because. Because over here we didn't have that in interface, so it's just we're just waiting for for the official um, guidelines to say, okay, you guys open now or you don't open. Most event centers are officially not still closed, so you have a lot of house parties. There are some who have opened, but they have um, they will just stick to the little numbers that have been given. But why you have churches where you say places of worship can operate at half capacity so why can't we have events do the same so that's that's one of the things that we are having to deal with and um, we've been making inroads to um, talk 
with the government so that they can see with us and we can now put in um, tougher, tougher uh, safety protocols and still have our events. I, um, yeah, I mean, I would. I, I mean, people here did speak up, like and we did speak up in social media and things like that and it was heard. Um, and then again, like when I was at the, at my wit's end, I'm like, listen, this is unfair. The, you know, restaurants are open and weddings are not allowed. And like, right when I was on vacation and that was happening. And so when I, when we were writing back was when I found out that, you know, they were open half capacity. Um, I, I would speak up. I mean, you, you have a right to speak up. Um, it, it, yeah. a lot of things that happen that are a little bit unfair. And I really do think that like, you know, it's, it's, I'm all for being safe, but we still have to move on. We still have to like live, you know, what are yeah, you- we have to learn to live with the pandemic. We have to learn to live with the virus. That's exactly. True. And instead of just stopping, like saying like, we can't, it's just, we are, humans are not meant to be just stuck in their houses, you know, or not at all. We're social animals. <laughs> We're all going to go crazy. Uh, but I do just think that if there's protocols, in place and that you know you speak with the venues planners venues even people who don't uh, don't like wearing masks or whatever we'll do whatever we have to do to continue doing our jobs and and i think that that's something that we should really push for for sure okay so now when you guys do uh, venue styling do you always put it do you always take into consideration the social distancing yes so we have, uh, so the events that I've done lately, which have not been many. Um, so the planner, I usually, for those with, there was like a planner. Um, but yeah, like one of the last event that I did, which was Friday, it was a cocktail party. Um, and it was like 30 people. It was outdoors. All, all the outdoor venues are a little bit more lenient because it's just better. Yeah, because outside. Yeah, because it's outside. Um, and then we did a wedding in, I believe, was it April? And it was at a house. Um, and then they also did that as well. The, the, the table settings were um, social distance and everything else. Uh, so for sure, I mean, they came out with uh, a guideline uh, list of things that we have to follow. So yes, for sure we do. Mm -hmm. So we have to also like the weddings that, have, that we have coming up, like we have one in December. We have to have like two separate um, like setups. So she wants to have it indoors, but the indoor part of the venue is not open. So we have a separate setup for outdoors and also considering that it might be social distance and everything else. So yeah, for sure we do. Okay. I think for, for, for me, my biggest challenge with social distancing is my clients. So you get clients, oh, you're, you're not, you're not going to be able to accommodate as many people as well. I'm like, you have a number. Let's reduce, like, uh, we have a, um, the, the banquet um, table that takes 10. So now we'll do it half, which is five. You get people still say, no, do it at seven, do it at eight. I'm like, so that's no social distancing. So we've had that challenge with clients. They want to fit in because... Where we're from, we have large parties. Yeah. So uh, in the past, a really intimate party will be 150, 200. So our regular parties are like weddings are like a thousand people. So now having to struggle with who do we invite, who don't we invite, I think that's one of the things, other challenges that our clients are having to deal with and just try as much as possible to, you know, they did regard the social distance. <laughs> this is I mean, it's true. It is hard. I mean, it's hard in regular normal life. You go to the supermarket and there's people that are just like right on top of you or not wearing their mask correctly. <laughs> um, that's just it's hard. I mean, I feel for the planners. I can only imagine um just doing a wedding <laughs> and having to just kind of play babysitter a little bit. Um, but you know what? Oh yeah. There will be a, I, I can't wait for the day where we're cleaning out our closet and we see this little mask and we're just like, oh my God, remember that one time when we gotta know, go. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, the whole world was just, you know, and, and 
Um, yeah. even positive. It's hard now, it, and and it will be hard for a little bit, but it'll 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 end, and things will change. Things will definitely change. I think that weddings, yeah, it will. Way. Some some things, you know, smaller weddings are a little bit nicer in some cases. Um, and then you know, people could also get those beautiful weddings. That I think one of the things that I run into, floral wise is people want these beautiful weddings that they see on Pinterest, but they just don't have the budget for it, you know, because they have 150 people or whatever. And then, you know, once they cut that guest count, then all of a sudden this, you know, invoice that was only- They're able to afford that. Yeah, it just makes it so much nicer. Um, So- No, yeah. yeah, I guess going forward, we would appreciate intimate um, events more. And I, it's very, it's, it, 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 and it goes easy on our pocket. So if you have to have a low budget, I think it will work for everyone. So yeah. the big fuss on, oh, big, um, large scale events, all that will reduce, all that will reduce. And I, I think we'll get used to it. It's something we're already getting used to anyway. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it's, there's been a lot of different trends. Like you have, even before the pandemic, things were, you would see some smaller weddings, at least here in the U.S. Um, even my wedding before the, the pandemic was only 50 people. But just because I'm in the vet industry, I, I kind of, you know, know like this is how much I want to spend. And this is the time, the amount of time that I want to spend with people. Um, and I, I love events. But for me, I like smaller things just because I like to be able to talk to everybody. And so I, I just, who knows? Maybe maybe it'll just be a trend for a little bit and then everything will, you know, then... Go it. back to normal. <laughs> you know, we don't know. But I mean, for now, we just have to take it as it comes. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So, um, well, we're almost, um, we're almost past the time. But... What would be your advice for event professionals? What what should be their takeaway from this? So the takeaway, ooh, I, I've had a lot of takeaways. Uh, um, we're ready to hear. Okay, so one thing, what you know, when I said that I was spending time on doing things that I didn't have time or, or redoing my, um, my contracts. Um, one thing that I did, yeah. I um, I bought the not the domain name. Oh, I forgot what it's called. When you buy the name of something, like company name. Um. Oh, I forgot. We had to, so one one of the things that happened was somebody tried to take our business name and recreate it as their own. Um, oh so, wow! Huh? That's fast enough. Yeah. Passing off. Yeah. So then um, we had did everything necessary to protect our business. And that was one thing that yeah. um, I did in the beginning was one. Oh, we trademarked the business name. There you go. So we trade, we had trademarked the business name. We did all that stuff. We really got our business into the, in our P's and Q's and took advantage of that. So the takeaway of this is that if you think something is, isn't going to happen in your business, it may happen. You know, it's like, if you don't think that pandemic is, you know, is never going to happen, it happened. You know, same thing with, I didn't think that someone was going to just, somebody that I also knew, who I, like not knew me personally, but had, you know, we had worked together briefly and um, I didn't think this person was going to try to take my, my business name and recreate it, um, but it did happen. So we have to be, as business owners, be prepared for anything, anything. What you think is not yeah. gonna happen. And that's one huge takeaway. And then the other thing is that never be too comfortable where you are business-wise. Always be able to pivot, always be able to grow, always be able to push back and really learn, you know, um, yeah. your circumstances. Like that's one big thing. Cause now, you know, like you said, like some of us, we've had to do these big events to small events. So that would yeah. be my advice is, is really like, you know, protect yourself from everything and anything. Really listen to other vendors when they say, you know, 
I can't tell you when I told people, you know, you should really trademark that name. And this person would be like, oh, no one would ever do that to me. And I'm like, it happened to me. And you know what happened? You know, the whole reason why I did it was because a friend of mine, it happened to her. And she kept telling me, Chris, you have to trademark that name. Someone's going to take oh, it. Wow. And so as soon as when the pandemic happened and I had the time, I did. And it saved me. So never be too comfortable. Always have be on your P's and Q's and always be able to reinvent yourself. Always keep going no matter how hard and believe in yourself because you started this business out of nothing and you're going to continue being successful and pushing. And I really wish you guys all the best. Okay. Okay. Hey, Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. Oh, great, great, great. Okay, so, okay, yeah, so we should, okay, so we have to stay away from our comfort zone because, yes, I heard a speaker say the other day that you will fail in your comfort zone. I think it just makes us lazy or just makes us complacent and just, you know, just there. It's true. So we have to keep moving. We have to keep moving. Always keep moving. Yes, yes. So Chris, um, I'm going to open it up um, to see if we have any more questions. So if you have any questions, you can pop it in the chat box. And Chris is happy to answer all the questions. We'll just give it like um, two minutes. So we can do that, yeah? Awesome. I almost wish I had music. <laughs> I don't see. Can you see me? I can't see you. I guess let's work just kick out. Join us in that. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, now you're back. Yeah, I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Tochi, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? No more, we don't. Okay. Okay, so if there, are not, if there are no more questions, we'll have to let Chris go. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. I know that you're a busy person. We appreciate your time. And we will be calling on you in the very near future. I hope you'll respond to us. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. It was so nice meeting you and talking. And, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Chris. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're normally on on Tuesday. So we'll see you guys on Tuesday next week for another episode of the Octopus Series. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.